Vortexes are naturally occurring phenomena and can also be generated artificially. There are two types of vortexes, free and forced. A free vortex is created naturally due to asymmetry of geometrical and physical boundary conditions of the flow without any source of external force or energy. Examples of free vortexes are a whirlpool in a river, tornado, fluid spinning while draining from a vessel such as a sink, bathtub, or when you flush a toilet. Force vortexes are produced by external forces. Examples of force vortexes are rotating vessels contacting liquids with a constant angular velocity or flow through centrifuge pumps. The vortex apparatus consists of a cylindrical vessel with two pairs of diametrically opposed inlet tubes of 9 mm and 12 mm diameters. The 12.5 mm diameter inlet tubes are angled at 15 degrees to the diameter in order to create a swirling motion to the water entering the vessel during the free vortex experiment. A smooth outlet is centrally positioned in the base of the vessel and a set of push and orifices of 24, 16, and 8 mm diameter is supplied to reduce the outlet diameter to a suitable value. The vortex surface profile is determined by a caliper housed on a mounting bridge. This gives the coordinate points required to plot the vortex profile. The force vortex is created by positioning a bush plug in the central hole in the base of a vessel and introducing the flow through the 9mm inlet tubes which are angled at 60 degrees to the diameter. The input water from these tubes impinges on a tube weighted paddle. The water exits the vessel via the 12.5 mm diameter tubes. The tube weighted paddle rotates on a vertical shaft supported by the bushed plug. Position the apparatus of the hydraulics bench such as the outlet of the vessel is over the weir trough and level the apparatus. Select an orifice and push it into the central outlet of the vessel. Connect the inlet pipe to the hydraulics bench. Close position the three-way valve such that the water flows into the vessel via the 15-degree inlet ports. Turn on the pump, gradually open the bench control, and allow the vessel to fill with water. After the vessel is slightly overflowing, slowly open the outlet valve such that the water level maintains a stable height. Note that you can also adjust inlet valve in order to maintain a constant water level. After a constant water level is occurred, measure water surface profile using the measuring caliper. This can be achieved by adjusting the caliper to a desired radius and then lowering into the vortex until the needles evenly touch the walls of the vortex. At this point, record the indicated height of the caliper and repeat for the remaining radii. After you have completed the measuring, turn off the bench, drain the apparatus, and repeat the process for the remaining two orifices. Position the bush plug into the outlet of the vessel and mount the two blade paddle wheel on the shaft, ensuring that the tapered edge of the blades are angled upwards. Close the outlet valve. Adjust the three-way valve such that water flows into the vessel via the 60-degree outlet ports. Turn on the pump. Open the bench control valve. And allow water to enter the vessel. Note that the inlet may need to be adjusted in order to achieve low-profiled calm vortex. After the water level is stable, Measure the vortex surface profile. This is done by mounting the measuring bridge to the vessel and then lowering the needles until they are touching the profile of the vortex and then locking them into place. Then remove the bridge and measure the heights of each needle. It is recommended that this be done using a graph or engineering paper.
After you have measured the profile, record the time it takes for the paddles to make 10 revolutions in the tank. Dividing the revolutions by the time needed to make the revolutions will give you the angular velocity. Increase the inflow rate to achieve a higher angular velocity and repeat the process so that you have four distinct vortices. As you increase the flow rate, change the count of the revolutions to 20, 40, and finally 50. Be sure to clean up your station and any water that may have spilled. Following the lab manual, complete the results table and put together your lab report. If you have any questions, consult your teaching assistant or professor.